Now we are discussing part G, the types of research. There are some types of research, and one of them is descriptive research. As this video is especially crafted step by step, therefore, let's check where have we been. Ranjit Kumar divide the research process into three steps, three phases, with eight steps. We had already discussed phase one, identifying variables, constructing hypotheses, and reviewing the literature. Therefore, our discussion now is about phase two, planning a research study with the topic step two conceptualizing a research design. Talking about conceptualizing a research design or before you decide the design of your research, prior knowledge is required. They are, you need to understand the research approaches of quantitative and qualitative. And the second is, you need to understand the types of research. Understand the research approaches of qualitative and quantitative, especially their differences had been discussed. Now we are going to cover understanding the types of research. Our discussion will be divided into three parts. They are part A, what are the types of research? Part B, descriptive research. In part B, we are going to answer the questions such as, what is descriptive research? When to use descriptive research? And what are the methods or designs that are termed as descriptive research. And finally, part C, we will make our review, conclusion, or summary. Let's get it done. Part A, what are the types of research? According to C.R. Kothari, types of research generally is divided into three, and in specific, we have six, and they are descriptive versus analytical, number two, applied versus fundamental, and number three, quantitative versus qualitative. While according to Ranjit Kumar, he also divides the type of research into three, in general, and eight in specific. And they are number one, based on the perspective of applications of the findings of the research study, then the type of research is divided into two. They are pure research and applied research. Based on the perspective of the objectives of the study, then the type of research is divided into four types. They are descriptive study, correlational study, explanatory research, and exploratory research. And number three, based on the perspective of mode of inquiry used in conducting the study, the type of research is divided into two classifications. They are the structured approach and the unstructured approach. Here they are. Based on Kotaru, 
in general there are three in specific they are six descriptive versus analytical applied versus fundamental and quantitative versus qualitative while Ranjit Kumar divides the types of research three in general and eight in specific based on the perspective of application there are two types namely pure research and applied research based on the perspective of the objectives there are four types descriptive study correlational study explanatory research and exploratory research and based on the perspective of mode of inquiry the type of research is classified into two classifications namely the structured approach and the unstructured approach well even though they have different numbers but they only use different terms well actually they have similarities in general to make sure let's start first from one type of them that is descriptive research so part b we are going to discuss and answer the question of what is descriptive research back to kothari he defines that the descriptive research the major purpose of descriptive research is description of the state of affairs as it exists at present so that is about describing the state of affairs as it exists at present at the moment in addition he also states that descriptive research is another term for ex post facto research especially when it is dealing with social science and business research it means descriptive research is another term for ex post facto research in the topic of social science and business research the researcher has no control over the variables so if your research is about descriptive research then you as a researcher have no control over the variables in other words the researcher doesn't control the variables the methods of research utilized or done in descriptive research are survey methods of all kinds including comparative and correlational methods it means talking about descriptive research so the methods to gather or to collect the data is based on survey methods of all kinds it means any kinds of survey which is including comparative and correlational methods while according to Ranjit Kumar he states that a descriptive research is a research study classified as descriptive study attempts to describe systematically attempts to describe systematically a situation problem phenomenon service program or provides information about say the living condition of a community or describes attitudes towards an issue a situation problem phenomenon and so on are the topics which are being investigated or being answered 
or solve. In addition, he also states that the main purpose of such studies is to describe what is prevalent with respect to the issue or problem under study. Let's have another definition and based on Adibath in his URL, he states that descriptive research is defined as a research method that describes the characteristics of the population or phenomenon that is being studied. So again, this is about description. What is being described? The characteristics of the population or phenomenon that is being studied. This methodology focuses more on the what of research subject rather than the why of the research subject. It means dealing with descriptive research, it focuses to answer the question what, not the question why. In other words, descriptive research primarily focuses on describing the nature of a demographic segment or subject without focusing on why a certain phenomenon occurs. Demographic segment that is a specific persons or people in a society it can be based on age, social background, economic background, or culture. In addition, this is based on Sona McCombs in her URL. She describes or states that descriptive research aims to accurately and systematically describe a population situation or phenomenon. Okay, again you have the word describe. What is being described? The population, the situation or phenomenon or the topic which is under investigation. The descriptive research focuses on answering the questions such as what, when, where, and how. But take a look at the red words. Descriptive research doesn't deal in answering the question why. In addition, Sonome Combe states that a descriptive research design can use a wide variety of quantitative and qualitative methods to investigate one or more variables. Unlike in experimental research, qualitative research, the researcher does not control or manipulate any of the variables but only observes and measures them. What does it mean? It means a descriptive, a descriptive research can be in the methods of quantitative or qualitative. It You may investigate one or more variables, but if you are the researcher, you don't control or manipulate any of the variables. In fact, you only observe and measure the variables. Let's make a conclusion or summary of what is descriptive research. Then here we are. Descriptive research is one of some types of research. That's true because there are some types of research and one of them is descriptive research. Descriptive research 
can be in the method of quantitative or qualitative. It means the way the data is collected and analyzed can be in the form of quantitative, but it means it is descriptive quantitative or descriptive statistics and also it can be in the form of qualitative method. Descriptive research is another name or term for ex post facto research, especially if the topic is in social topic. Descriptive research The researcher has no control over the variables. It means there is no manipulation of independent variable. And descriptive research attempts to describe a situation, problem, phenomenon, the nature of a demographic segment or subject. And it focuses more on the word question rather than the why question. Now we continue to part B when to use descriptive research. Descriptive research is an appropriate choice when the research aim is to identify or describe. Once again, I made the words in red color. The aim of descriptive research is to identify or describe. What is being identified or described? Their characteristics, their frequencies, trends, correlation, and categories of a population. Population here is another term for respondents, subjects, participants, or sample. We'll be talking about population and sample in different video. When your research does not determine cause and effect, so it means if your research doesn't determine cause and effect, then you can say that your research is descriptive research. In other words, when your research has no manipulation of variable or experimentation in order to get the data, then your research it can be descriptive research. Because if you do or if you determine cause and effect, you do manipulation of variable or you conduct an experiment to get the data, then your research will be identified as experimental research. Let's discuss some examples to help us have more understanding about what descriptive research is. Number one, how is the student's perception if they are taught through X. If you are the researcher, then to answer this question, you need to get the data by interviewing or distributing questionnaire to the students, dealing with their perception if they are taught through X. Suppose X here is any kind of teaching method. So, the way to get their perception if they are taught by any kind of teaching method, the data is obtained through observation, interview, or by distributing questionnaire. And here, having got the data, you just describe their perception. So it means this deals with description. Example number two. What are most difficult topics of English 
that are faced by Indonesian students. To answer this question, then a researcher needs to gather the data by interview, observing, or distributing questionnaire. Dealing with the topic that is difficult to the respondents, and the researcher analyzes it by finding out what is the most difficult from some options given by the respondent. For example, if you are one of the respondent, then Perhaps you choose phonology and the other students choose structure and so on and so on. Then the researcher concludes by checking which one is mostly chosen by the respondents and that will be the conclusion for this question. Number three, how has the Amsterdam housing market changed over the past 20 years? In this case, the researchers explain how is the processes changing. So it means this is only explanation of the changing process. Number four. Do customers of company A prefer product X or product Y? Just make it simple. Suppose you are a customer. Then I want to know whether you prefer X to Y. So in order to know your preference, I can interview you or observe you when you buy product whether you choose X or Y then having got the information I tell the people about your preference so that is how this question is answered or solved number five what are the main genetic behavioral and morphological differences between European wild cats and domestic cats so this is about analysis so a researcher needs to analyze the morphological european wild cats and domestic cats and find their similarities and differences in the end the researcher explains whether they have similarities and differences number six what are the most popular online news sources among under 80s? So this is about surveying the history or reviewing the history. It means you just need to find the information, especially under 80s, dealing with the most popular online news sources. Okay? If you have got the information, then you just let the people know about that. So again, this is only explanation or explanatory. Number 7. How does the disease spread in District A and District B? So, in this case, you just explain how the disease spread in district A and district B but you don't answer the question why in district A the spread the disease spreads like this and district B like this no but you only need to explain the process of spreading in district A and district B so those are examples of questions dealing with descriptive research now we continue to part b what are the methods 
or designs that are termed as descriptive research. So, this topic helps you to understand if, for example, you know or confuse of some terms relating to descriptive research. Descriptive research can use both qualitative and quantitative research methods. Once again, descriptive can be in the form of qualitative or quantitative research methods. The research design should be carefully developed to ensure that the results are valid and reliable. Now we focus on what are the types of the methods which are termed as descriptive research and they are survey research, observation research and case studies. Just in general, survey research means here to gather or to obtain the data then the respondents answer through surveys, questionnaires, or by pollings. While observation research, in this case, the researcher obtains or collects the data by observing the subject object under the research. Again, data based on observation, that is observation research. While case studies, the researcher gathers detailed data to identify the characteristics of a narrowly defined subject. Here you need to focus on the words a narrowly defined subject. So this is specific subject. The way you get the data can be based on survey or observation. To understand them more, we will have specific videos talking and dealing with them. Finally, now we come to part C, review, conclusion and summary. Talking about research types, we have two sources from Kothari and Ranjit Kumar, in which, based on Kothari, he divides the type of research into three in general and six in specifics. They are descriptive versus analytical, applied versus fundamental, quantitative versus qualitative, while Ranjit Kumar three in general and eight in specific. They are based on the perspective of applications. It is divided into two types, namely pure research and applied research. And based on the objectives of the study, the research types are divided into four types. Descriptive study, correlational study, explanatory research, and exploratory research and the th third based on mode of inquiry used in conducting the study the type of research is divided into two namely the structured approach and the unstructured approach once again no need to be confused because they only use different terms it means the in general they are just similar. And dealing with what is descriptive research or its definition, then we can say descriptive research is one of some types of research. It means one of them. Descriptive research can be quantitative or qualitative method it means the way the data is obtained or analyzed can be in the form of quantitative or qualitative method 
because if we talk about quantitative and qualitative method we have some designs specified to them descriptive research is another term for ex post facto research especially in the topic of social if a researcher conducts a research descriptively then he or she has no control over the variables if your research is about descriptive research so it means it attempts to describe a situation to describe a situation problem phenomenon the nature of a demographic segment or subject demographic segment that is people in a society it can be based on age based on gender based on social background based on economic background and so on and descriptive research focuses more on what it means to answer the question what rather than the question why so it means descriptive research gives the description or the explanation of the topic under study but the researcher doesn't answer the question why is occurred or happened once again what not why when to use a descriptive